first, oh, we have to have that talk. The talk about Nick's plea for an NBA awards ballot. Nick star Julius Randle took home yep. most improved player honors this season. Randle nearly a unanimous winner. Jeremy Grant, the only other player to get first place votes. Nick, you and the voters nailed this one with Randall at the top, buddy. Kudos. Yeah, I, let, kudos. Look at what the official vote was. Randall won, Grant two, Michael Porter Jr. three, just barely, 141-38 between second and third. Now can we show my ballot, please? My ballot that was returned to sender. It is Randall one, Porter two, Grant three. Now obviously that's the correct order, but it's very close between two and three. I tend to favor the winning player in Porter. Um, what more do I need to do, America? I submit the ballot. It gets verified and validated every year by the actual ballot, and then they send it back to me. At this point, I, I can believe nothing other than Chris Broussard and Kevin Wilds in their bi-weekly meetings with Adam Silver are conspiring against me, and I don't appreciate it. But there's the ballot, once again, in lockstep with the, you know, the smart media members. So I don't know what more I can do, Jenna. I'm starting to lose my spirit for it. To be honest, I'm starting to lose my spirit. No, come on. Very sad. No. It's unfair. Oh, no. It's unfair. Nick, when your spirit goes, <laughs> so does the show. It's we, Our show is based on you it's not sad. getting your vote. Back here with Antoine Walker. Tuan, what a night at the Garden last night. Knicks and Hawks and 15,000 diehard, louder-than-life New York City fans who watched the Knicks win a playoff game for the first time in eight long years, beating the Hawks. How about 26 points from Derrick Rose off the bench to help him do it? Big night in the Big Apple. Too much excitement for one playoff win, maybe. <clears throat> Not for me to say. Antoine, what was your biggest takeaway from last night's Knicks win? That we need to start to get Derrick Rose's flowers. I think, um, one, obviously, we're excited about the Knicks win and the, the way they play. But Derrick Rose, if you watched that game last night, um, kept them in the game in the first half. And then the second half, he was able to contribute to, into the other guys' game. But I think what Derrick has done over the last two and a half years, it gets um, unnoticed because he's, he was hurt and he had a bad rut there. But he's back. Um, he's one of the, the better six men that we have in this league. I'm not sure why he, he wants to be a six man and, and not a starting point guard. But Tim showed you last night with his extended minutes. When Derrick's on the floor, they're a better team. This is a young team that's never been in playoff situation. And he and he led that team last night. It also shows, and I, I alluded to this earlier, about the crowd participation. When you got crowds out there, your role players play better. You watch these young Nick players um, feed off the energy at the garden. It's loud, it's crazy. You're getting great play from some of your young players. So this is what playoff basketball is all about. This is going to be a great series. I think this series will go seven games. I know the Knicks dominated them during yep. the season, but Atlanta's playing good basketball right now. This will be one of the more entertaining series. And it's great to see um, the fans involved. But I'm a Chicago guy. I'm a little biased to a certain degree. But Derek is playing great. I'm so happy for this guy. And to be the veteran guy and leader on this team, um, it's great, especially for Derrick Rose. A uh, thousand percent. And we thought Derrick Rose's career was over. The narrative on Derrick Rose yes. three years ago was the only reason he hadn't retired was retiring would void the remainder of his Adidas contract. And so he was playing out the string just so Adidas had to play, pay him. He was adamant that was never what it was, that he thought he could get back to a level. And he had an amazing Instagram caption the other day where he says, you know, he gets people come up to him and say, essentially, they remember the player that he once was. And he talked about how early in his, you know, he compares his career to a game of chess. He's like, early in the match, I lost my queen. And I worked my butt off to get a pawn all the way up the board to get a new queen. He's a totally different player. He's a better passer. He's a better shooter. He has none of the athleticism he used to have. And he's a vital piece, yeah. I would argue, the second most important player on a playoff team. And a team that just won a playoff game. And Wilds, the way Knicks fans reacted to winning a playoff game. Let's go. Ended if there was any <laughs> doubt whatsoever about what New York City basketball means, it is there is the Knicks, then there are like people watching uh, the Knicks whoa, at a bar, whoa. then there are people talking whoa. about the Knicks, and then it's whatever's <laughs> happening at Barclays. Well, far like the, the oh Nets are a better God. team, the Knicks, the Nets have the stars. Still, yeah, it's, it's all true. true. But this is not a question what what team this town cares about, Wilds.
That's right, that's right. And finally, it has happened because for years, as the Knicks hunted for free agents and have been like, you know, world's, world's most famous arena, oh, you know, Ali Frazier, you know, it's the best, the Pope was here, and every free agent was like, eh, it's cold, I don't really quite okay. get it, you guys have a losing culture. Last yeah, night sure. was the definitive sign that New York basketball is back and it's going to lead to free agent signings of players and maybe fans. And yes, I'm looking at you, Brandon Marshall, because when LeBron James, who everyone listens to, tweets, oh, the garden is electric, people listen. <laughs> and after the game, uh-oh, <laughs> after the game, what was it? Did, did, did the Knicks win the championship? What? Nope. They're chanting, we want Brooklyn. And Brandon, I hate to break it to you. If you think, if we, if we get to uh, a New York like Subway series, it will be purple and purple, I'm sorry. It will be orange and blue jerseys <laughs> everywhere, including right. Barclays. Right. <laughs> so Brandon, I will give you an opportunity now. If you want to renounce your Nets fandom on national television, oh, he's that, that, the you Nets did it, good job. Away. Through the jersey. Look at him. He, he's he's, 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 he's away. Away. Good job. He's he's good. Good. Yeah, yeah, good. Good. Great job. He didn't release. Great no. job. Stop uh -huh. it. Stop it, Nick. I'm throwing them at Wows. Please stop it. We know who the better team is, but Nick, Jenna, you guys are absolutely right. You know, New York and all of basketball has been waiting for this moment. That's why Dolan has to get it right. Like, we don't want MSG to be a place where Kevin Durant or LeBron James or Steph Curry comes in and drop 50, and that's the storyline. Like, this is what NBA, the NBA uh, world needs. This is what the Knicks need. So this is awesome. I know they're playing against the Heat. Neither team will make it out of the second round, but this was awesome. MSG was rocking. In 2015, I had my biggest year on the football field. And I got a chance to come sit courtside, and they took care of me. I mean, just the hospitality, going into the little owner suite and seeing all the celebrities, and then you go sit courtside. And then the way they light up that arena, Twan and Nick, you guys can speak to this even better than I can because you guys probably yep. seen more games there. But they light up this arena where it's yeah. like the, the court just glows. In 2015, yeah. they won 17 games, and it was one of the most magical <laughs> experiences I've ever had. I sat, <laughs> I sat ringside, Pacquiao Mayweather, right. but there was nothing like sitting there yeah. watching a game at the Garden, and they won 17 <laughs> games. Awesome. Right, which is why you should root for the Knicks instead of the Nets, who have no fans and no history and none of it, but that's fine. Uh, all right, so two, one quick point, then a question for Antoine. The point, listen, I, I think I picked the Knicks in seven. I will stick with that. But for the love of God, Tom Thibodeau, will you please, somebody FedEx to Thibodeau, film of the 2015 and 2016 NBA Finals and the way the Cavs relentlessly attack Steph Curry on defense. They're letting Trey Young yeah. off the hook, put him in a thousand pick and rolls, beat him up, wear him out. Because the Knicks, they had to be safe. Last night, the, they held the Hawks to 35 points in the second half defensively. It was a great job, but they're going to have to score more points. But here's my question for Antoine Walker. Antoine, because we haven't talked to you yet this playoffs about the woeful, embarrassing, fraudulent Los Angeles Clippers. If the Mavs do go. end up finishing them off, do you think Kawhi listens to a phone call from the Knicks? He's a free agent this summer. He tried to take LeBron's town in L.A. that has blown up in his face. Maybe he tries <laughs> to take Katie and Harden's town in New York. Do you think he listens to anybody, including the Knicks, if the Clippers end up losing in round one? I think he has to listen because now it becomes a point where I don't think the Clippers fans may want him back um, because the expectation was so high. And then you go into the playoffs and you get eliminated in the first round um, I guess the Dallas Mavericks after two bad, two bad years, he may have to listen. He may get ran out of town. Uh, I know he played great in game two, um, but they're underachieving. Um, and, and it's actually embarrassing what's going on. Not to take anything away from Luka. Luka's got a terrific talent, an uh, MVP candidate. But you got two guys you signed because of their ability to be two of the better two-way players in this league. All I want to do, Nick, is when is one of those guys going to take the responsibility and guard them? And Garland, for real, not Patrick Beverly, 
not Reggie Jackson, not Reggie John Rondo, because he handles the ball a lot. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George take on a challenge. That's what they pay you big money for. And, and, it's, and it's sad because you and you look at a Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan and guys that you look up to and you watch those guys take the responsibility of guarding some of the better players, the best player on the, on the next team, and these guys have yet to do it. When is T. Lou? A guy who watched that last year, and I love T. Lou, yeah. my ex teammate. When are you when are you gonna make when is Chauncey Billings? When is that staff gonna I, make those guys step up and guard their man? It just becomes a total investment. So he definitely will have to look at it. But I can tell you this, Nick, a lot of free agents with this win last night and with the energy that's in that building and the way this Knicks team has yeah. played, they can get a free agent now. <laughs> It's some guys that's going to want to go there. I know. It's going to happen. <laughs> and, and I know it frustrates the producers because what we're talking about doesn't match what's at the bottom of the screen. But I am so glad we fit some Clippers slander into today's show. I'm so happy. <laughs> it was supposed to be about the Knicks and we just fit it in there. We slid it in there through the back door. A little Clippers slander. Great job.